nice to see them here faces. Yes, Ashi. Helps me. Welcome Dr. Kanta. A very warm welcome to all of you. And a good morning. A pleasant, relaxed, cheerful, productive, mindful morning. That's what we all wish. It doesn't happen that way. What we get is a hurried morning, a frustrated morning, an anxious morning, an angry, hurried, never relaxed morning. It begins the moment we start hyperventilating over the missed alarm. Then it's the almost missed gap. Then, of course, the traffic. And finally, the not to be missed meetings and deadlines. Great to have you all here in spite of the meetings and deadlines. So by the end of the day, we are exhausted, tired, and we have a lot of sympathy for ourselves. And this is what our mind says. Such a hard day, I at least deserve to eat something nice. Nice like in pizza. But then I'm eating healthy, so I'll take a diet coke. <laughs> eating healthy. We think a lot about eating healthy. Think being the word here. We think about eating healthy when we are hyperventilating. When our medical reports tell us that it's time to start thinking. When our clothes don't feed us anymore. When somebody else is on a diet. Talking lighthearted is fine, but food and our eating lifestyle is what keeps us going and what stops us from moving. Today we have with us Dr. Khadar, an eminent forest agricultural scientist and food expert who will guide us on healthy food habits and create awareness on unhealthy eating habits. Dr. Khadar is an independent forest agricultural scientist and food expert. A native of Pradatur town, Andhra Pradesh, he did his MSc in education from the Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. He did his PhD on the topic of steroids from IISC Bangalore. Later, he took a postdoctoral research on environmental science from Beaverton, Oregon, US. His research focused on deactivating deadly herbicides and environmental pollutants like Agent Orange and dioxins. With food being rapidly commercialized everywhere, Dr. Khadar found it more meaningful to work for a healthy society in his own country. He returned to India in 1997 and settled in Mysore. Dr. Khadar discovered that there were five millets that had healing properties that could cure even deadly diseases. The growth of these millets was fast disappearing and he worked relentlessly in reviving them. The five millets, foxtail, kodo, little, banyard and brown top, are together named Siridhanya. He is also a proponent of padakrishi or jungle farming. Dr. Khada practices homeopathy informally and treats his patients by recommending consumption of Siridhanya millets and different plant tree leaf decoctions. His food and health talks are very popular and a great crowd to us. We are honored to have Dr. Khada here with us today and we warmly welcome him to us. I request Mr. Srinath to escort Dr. Khada onto the dais and on. different parts of India, or 
the clearer few places. Actually, the word food has not been defined till now in the world series. And that being the case, the corporate companies have ejected and wanted everyone in the world to eat the same things so that everyone consumes and then they can make money. So whatever is possible and easy for them to grow in large quantities, they slowly and steadily designed and then the so-called scientists, the so-called health industry is all sabotaged by these big companies. And then everyone is made to believe that this is what it is and this is it, nothing more beyond this. So everyone is boxed. To the extent that the world now lives on supplements. Just for fun, a simple example is all the fellows are now working in big buildings and you are not exposed to sun, even if you are in India where sun is abundantly available. Um, this was the problem with northern uh, hemisphere states. They don't have vitamin D, so you need to be exposed to it. All these guys now speak of big business. So you, you guys are not exposing yourself. So the simple solution we just go out and stand for half an hour in the sun. I mean, that should be the solution. But then you were corporate system is this oh half an hour going into the room, nothing going. So oh you take tablets. <laughs> so there's another company supplying tic tac like small things are so popular. So now all are you go to your clinic, some you are uh, medical officers or doctors, hey you have vitamin D. Any problem you have vitamin D, just push it. So it becomes like now very standard procedures for all these software companies, not only here in India, all over the world. Vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin D, calcium, which is all very mandatory. Just go to the doctor, then mandatory push. Because it's become easy for them to create a business. And sadly, calcium supplements, I give you, everyone, everyone takes calcium supplements. Despite, they themselves telling that you drink milk, you get calcium. You are drinking calcium in form of milk, you are taking tablet in the form of calcium supplement. And after all that, 30% of you guys have got rheumatism, arthritis and bone problems, this problem, that problem. But the same guys have told, calcium is abundantly available in milk. So everyone is drinking liters of milk. And then calcium problem takes supplement, taking calcium supplement also. All center there is ice cream is good, you get blood. Eat ice cream also. But at the end of the day, you still have problems associated with cash. That means these things are not working, no one wants to think about it. My doctor said I am consumed. Believe me, no vitamins, no minerals are absorbed by the body properly if it is not in the real food. Period. This is the science of it. That means what all these guys have been telling you all along, these so-called health industry guys, is all bogus. Complete bogus. So the simple thing you should have done is, what is the real food that has good amount of cash and figure out, so happens it is sesame seed. Just ten times more cash. I mean, if you just eat one laddu, we call it laddu, once a week, your calcium problem is completely solved. Completely solved. Just to prove the point, we have had a case, not one case, thousands of them. A lady declared to be cancerous patient of cervical uh, area. Given chemotherapy, radiotherapy, all said and done. She said, okay, you are done. We cannot do anything more. Whatever time you are left with, you live, go home. <coughs> and they put some tubes here and there because she cannot swallow. 
At that time, poor lady, some grandson had heard my lecture and said, oh, let me see. So he made some sesame seed laddu. That boy, 18 year old boy, that he did recognize that that lady cannot eat that laddu because they are not eating. Then he called me, sir, I made laddu, but she is not able to eat. Very innocent boy. I said, you make milk out of sesame seed. How can I make milk? Just soak them in the night, 100 grams in half liter. Then just grind it, and then put it in a muslin cloth and take the milk and give her the milk. That fellow, because sincerely she took care of when she was growing, so he was very, and her parents didn't bother about, I mean, the son and daughter didn't bother. The grandson did this for 18 days. Lo and behold, he didn't do anything else. In fact, I told him you have to give Arka Ganji. So once in a while he gave Arka Ganji. But regularly he went this milk and gave her. Eighteen days, lo and behold, she sat up. Another eighteen days, she removed all her tubes. Then they got encouraged and then he saw my videos much seriously and then again fed her all the stuff, cervical cancer, uterus. He saw the list. There is a PDF going around, we will give you what to eat, what kashayam so. Believe me, in 18 weeks, everyone was surprised because for 18 years the lady was walking like this. Because her whole osteo problems were so many that she could not stand straight. But then after these 18 weeks, she just got up from the bed and stood like this. So, his grandson, who is this lady? Because his image is that she is like this. <laughs> when she went to the hospital, she got up and then they were also spent. All at a sudden, after 18 weeks, she is right in my office, in my clinic, which is first floor. So this is the magic of taking the food naturally. So what happened to that body, which was almost in the deathbed? Give the right food, things happen. And people called me 15 years back magic man. I never do any magic. Because I didn't even see this lady. I didn't even know this boy did all this. So what is the story here? The human race has missed something. In the Haribari, so tensed up, anxious, all this. All that is happening because you are not eating right. It's not because you are being driven by corporate people doing all this. It's, it's all actually, you can manage any kind of nonsense if you are healthy, if you are cool. So it is not the tensions that are coming around, it is the tensions that are building within you. So if I'm cool, no amount of tension bothers me. That means you have lost the resistance. It means you have lost the capacity to be healthy. It is health. And no one is talking about health. Everyone is talking about not having diseases. There is a lot of difference between being healthy and not having diseases. And this difference is the most important thing that you need to recognize. So, you give vitamin D supplement, but, oh, vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is large amounts is available in meat, so everyone started eating meat. Oh, very important, B12, cobalamin is available only in meat products. So, drink milk. Do this, do this. But why? The whole world is meat eating. 97% of people are eating meat. Something or the other And why B12 deficiency? No one asked this question. Because they are interested in making B12 tablets or injections and then supplying to everyone. Hey, you have B12 and it takes. Business. Billion dollar businesses, they have created like this. One after the other. And vaccines.
oh, your body needs this vaccine, that vaccine. But before even the baby is born, I have 12 injections ready. <laughs> that baby, should I go out or not? If you don't want to come out, we are ready with cesarean. So normal deliveries are eliminated. <laughs> before even is in BCG, this, that, that. And millions of births have taken place on this planet Earth. Millions and millions, billions. And no one needed vaccines. I didn't have a vaccine. My daughter didn't have a vaccine. We are doing fine. And this vaccine is a business. Just bogus business. In fact, many vaccinated kids are turning to be attention deficit kids. You do not vaccinate your kids, you are better off. The chances of that your kid is not attention deficit. It is called autism, different <coughs> All these kinds of things <coughs> The same problems. Unnecessary, artificial things in the name of science and biotechnology. The whole human race is subjected. Because it's a business. Anyone who is born has to be injected this series of vaccinations. In fact, in America and some European countries, if you don't vaccinate, your kid is not allowed to be joining a school. Period. Can you see this? We don't want to see through this. Billions of kids have been born on this planet and no one was vaccinated. Till this so-called pharmaceutical companies came and figured this out. Huh? And we have no time to question all these guys. So now, if I say don't vaccinate your kids, a barrage of questions, oh, how do you know that we know? Oh, what happens? Oh, nothing happens, actually. <laughs> Just don't vaccinate your kids. That means you have to be healthy. And all the vaccination happens through your milk. The antibodies that require to give your baby the immunity is done in the first two, three days, if you feed your baby properly. The sad story is that you are not even allowed to feed your baby because they have to take weigh this, that, and put it in. And then after some time, only your baby is given in the so-called sophisticated resort hospitals. And this is the sad story of the modern day educated, civilized world. So don't be boxed. We are all boxed. I didn't give my kid any vaccination. She is fine. I subjected her as she was growing up to various kinds of living juices of the planet. Hundreds of decoctions. So now even if you take my daughter and put her in Chikungunya hospital, she doesn't catch. I can go to HIV hospital and sit, I will not catch HIV because my immunity is strong. Because we have prepared our immune making system strong. That's what happens if you live by nature. You close yourself up in dental cleaned shops, <laughs> you are bound to fall sick immediately. So this is the natural systems. Our bodies are not being boxed by nature. It is exposing all kinds of elements you need to be exposing yourself as you grow up. And that's where the immunity builds up. And this is the principle. And you do anything out of this, you are sick. Period. Now many techie guys all sitting in front of computers, come and tell me I have nervous problem, I have eye problem, this problem. The simple biological system, your eyes are not designed to see the light, source of the light directly. Very simple. Very simple. That means you are seeing a computer or a screen, which is source of light all the time. Then you are born to have trouble. Oh, it's a small source of light, so I can see. I go on seeing for 12 hours, 15 hours. So it has to adjust, so the nervous tension is distributed to some other part. So some people get spondylitis, some people get 
L4, L5 problems, some people get nervous disorders, some people get their urinary bladder goes kaput. You see, it doesn't, once you start, you have to run. You need a toilet immediately. So, why all the troubles? Just have a toilet in the office. So, run. Just run. The, the, the higher the managing room, immediately near the office, you have a toilet. What it means is he cannot hold his urine. I all this nonsense. Have the toilet in the bedroom itself. Now attached to bathrooms of people. This is all happening and we do not want to think about it. We are ready to build a bed with the toilet and press the button, high tech. The Japanese already they are doing. It is cold. What nonsense is going on in the name of science and development and progress in technology? So we are spending huge amounts of money and energy creating these stupid gadgets. <laughs> Which in place, first place, you don't need them if you are healthy. <coughs> you know, I, I want to urinate, I should be able to hold for a convenient time so that they just run, run, when people cannot, they are actually dripping. So why all these problems? They have now what is called catheters and bladders. They're stitching to their thighs. Eighteen billion dollar business in America. Both men and women, even young boys and girls are getting it. Young Yapu Chal Postunamate. Only for the users. All these sad things are happening. All this is because you have become a natural. Your food has become a natural. You are growing food naturally. You are eating things that are not meant to be eaten. And no doctor, no scientist is willing to come out and speak the truth. Simple, straightforward problems. Because your existence is at stake. So why a doctor should tell a lie? because he has to sell the tablets. So vitamin D, if you cannot go into the sun, what did these guys who were in the northern hemisphere do? They just figured out some natural material which has vitamin D, then consume them. So you have all the mushroom, which is called ergosterol, which you put it in the sun, it turns into vitamin D. So, you eat dried mushroom, you get your vitamin D. You eat fresh mushroom, you do not get vitamin D. And for ages, those guys have done this. In the rainy season, they get a lot of mushroom. They gathered it. They dried it and kept in steel or glass waters. In fact, those days they had the ceramic pingani. Then whenever they started feeling the bone pain and things like that. They ate this dried mushroom. So they soaked them in the night and the water and the mushroom, they put it in soup or water. Recipes you can make. Once in a week or twice in a week, they ate and they were fine. So what is wrong with this so-called scientist to just tell this information? Well, we do know any supplement you cannot absorb the required vitamins or it's only natural foods. So should there not be a system where we did research on these lines and then inform different local and regional people this is what you should do for these kind of things? It's been 50, 60 years. No scientific group is working in this particular direction. And what all they are doing is how do I convert everything into business model? How can I keep, make everyone consume this vitamin D tablet, vitamin B tablet, vitamin C, vitamin 17, vitamin 30, vitamin 80, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Keep naming series. iPhone 5, iPhone 6, iPhone 7. <laughs> HP, some model. <laughs> but our body is not like that. It doesn't change. 
It's been like this for millions of years. Very slow and steady changes happen, that's all. So that means you cannot say, hey, I am living in modern world, I eat modern food. Oh, you take tablets and then you think you are all right. That's bullshit. Nonsense. Unscientific. And uncivilized. Because to produce these food materials, we are killing the plant. To produce coffee that you guys are gulping down all the days, all through the day, we have destroyed our Western gods. We have destroyed the tea or Everest. And if India is only two places, where other countries, they have destroyed their whole system. Brazil, Argentina, Indies, Wendy's, Italy, and they are all just devastated. No rivers are flowing. It's all because your guys are all drinking coffee and tea. Very simple, straightforward equation. So if you all guys stop drinking coffee and tea, again Madikeri there will be rain, there will be. Kaveri will flow. Now Kaveri is gone, it's a river which was supposed to be perennial river. Now it's become annual river. Only three months it is flowing to the ocean. Despite building dams and all. It was at least flowing throughout the year. Now it's not. Not only Kaveri, Ganga, Narmada, Tunga, almost all the rivers in the world are now becoming annual, not perennial. The only reason is we are devastating the forest and the mountainous areas just to grow coffee, tea, soya bean and corn to produce tons and tons of meat that you are all eating. Why are you all eating wheat? Because vitamin B12 is there. <coughs> and this is the kind of system that we have built up in the last 50 years. Despite everyone becoming sick, 30 people are diabetic, 30 people are carcinogenic, cancerous, 30 people are rheumatic, 30 people are thyroid patients, 30 people are having some mental illnesses, which they do not know. God only knows. <laughs> they themselves do not know. So you go to the doctor, he gives a tablet, and he thinks he is all right, you are all right. <laughs> Seventy people, I believe, are once or the other having tension, high tension, BP problems. 60 people are not having sleep in the night, so they are taking sleeping meals. And 16 people are oversleeping. <laughs> they keep sleeping every night. No, no, 120 is the And uh, I calculated 30, 30, 70, 60. You know, it is out of 100 they are telling, but then we are getting 300. <laughs> that means each fellow doesn't have one disease. Each fellow has three diseases. Now that's not the case. Actually, many of the, my patients in the homeopathy clinic, they come with a file. They're taking tablets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Morning, one evening. So they are, the patients are maintaining the files, the copies. So many doctors they visit. Each doctor gives different labeled medicines, but they are giving the same stupid chemical. They are taking this also, that also. <laughs> and who are taking all these so-called educated engineers and all You are all scared to die. Like, what happens if I stop this mess? Nothing happens actually. <laughs> but taking that, you are getting more and more this. Everyone is like, oh, if I don't take this tablet, oh, you can leave your wife, not this tablet. That's what the <laughs> doctor has told. And that's why divorces are many. <laughs> it's not as silly as that, but it's become as silly as that. I'm trying to 
make it funny, but the problem is when they see us. When they see us. Very serious to the extent that there will be no more wild animals on this planet by 2030. And there will be no more sperms in men by 2040. And there will be 42 kids will be born out of 100 kids in future who will be autistic. Means non-functional kids are increasing in number. Now it's already reached 21. And no one is taking stock of the situation. 21 kids out of 100 are being born as they are labeling it differently. Autistic kids, attention deficit syndrome kids, um, differently abled kids, manasika vikalaru, anga vikalaru, some names, all these kinds of names. But the sad news is that the process of producing healthy kids is gone out of whack. And women are not able to bear children. No problem, we have IVF centers popping up like mushrooms every street. In vitro fertilizer. That means a wonderful act of sex is not going through natural processes. You cannot have a baby. It should have been just like that. But now you go to the doctor, they give steroid injection, this injection, that injection, this, telecom, this. So it's all turned to making business. This IVF was just for actually the cows. They wanted to produce more milk. Every time the milky cow should be there. That's what they said. Okay, go on injecting the semen. Let it become pregnant. In the moment it has given birth, again give birth. So the same technique they wanted. So business models, economic models are being sold as science, high-tech science, future science. How much more stupid can we get? How much more stupid can we get? And a lady is not able to menstruate properly, which has been going on for millions of years. Every 28 days, she used to menstruate. The cleaning up of 